guys, how's it going? Today we are going to be working in the greenhouse. It's raining a bit outside, which is helping to remove some of the snow. It's starting to warm up, so I'm excited about this project. We're going to be starting some Echinacea purpurea and three varieties of geraniums, my three favorites from last year. We started a bunch of varieties last year. I loved these three. And then we've got two iris rhizomes that I would like to pot up. So here's what we've got for seeds. The geranium varieties are Quicksilver, Apple Blossom and Bullseye Salmon, and then our Echinacea purpurea right here. And the Quicksilver, you guys, that's the variety that we dug out from around the chicken coop and potted up and brought in here. And they've done really well. They need to be groomed up a little bit right now, but at least it gives you a good idea as to what we can expect for color. I think they are gorgeous. And I had them around some Supertunia Royal Velvets and the Mini Vista Marine, I think was the name that deep purple and they were so beautiful. They look really good with that icy blue too. There's another one right there and here's cheddar. And real quick, what it looks like outside since we're by the door. Oh, it's just kind of a soggy wet mess at the moment, but it won't be for long. And then the iris rhizomes that we have, they were sent out to us from Holly and Howard in Kentucky and they're a variety called ginger snap that came from Shriners, which is in Oregon, and they're gorgeous. Maybe we can pop a picture of them up on the screen, but I wanted to include a little um, note from Holly's message to us. She said that these iris uh, called Ginger Snap are from her garden, but what makes them so special to her is that they were her grandfather's favorite in his iris garden back from World War II through the mid 1980s when he passed. I searched a long time to find them and even had to wait for Shriners to grow enough of their stock to make them available for sale. Um, and their color is definitely like a ginger snap cookie, but their real attraction is that they smell like a freshly poured glass of root beer. Isn't that so neat? So Holly and Howard, thank you for sending those out. I'm gonna pot them up in here today and just water them in. Probably won't touch them for a while. They won't need a lot of water. They're not, you know, obviously actively growing, but I don't want their rhizomes to dry out. Um, too much. So at least they'll be in here and ready to go for us to plant out once we can get into the ground again. Anyway, both of the seeds, the geranium and the echinacea can be started fairly early and you, you want to, especially with geraniums. They usually need between 12 and 16 weeks to be you know, blooming and ready to go out in your garden. Um, usually a sowing of geranium seeds like early January will produce blooms by mid to late-ish May. So I feel like I'm already a little bit late. The ones we have going in the Hartley, which we're gonna end up over there with one tray of our plants, our seeds today. Uh, so I'll show you what the ones we started in November look like now. Uh, but yeah, if you haven't started geranium seeds yet, I would encourage you to do that at this point. Very easy to grow. And these three varieties, they just, they just made me so happy. I have a lot of different colors in my inventory, but I just thought, no, I'm not gonna grow just like a little bit of everything. I think I'm gonna grow a lot of all three of these. I think I've got over a hundred of the apple blossom and bullseye salmon, and then I've got close to a hundred of the quicksilver, and I think we're gonna start all of them because I would love to grow some impact geranium displays this, this year, I think. And with those, it's pretty easy. I mean, you just barely cover the seed, keep them warm. They like it about 75 to germinate. You can put them on a heat mat if if you want to to speed that up I don't usually I just pop them in the studio and they're usually right around 70 in there 69 70 and they come up usually in a couple of days so they're fast and I am going to be growing these in the 72 count trays because I know I'm going to have to pot them up no matter what I put them in uh, so I thought I could get the most fit in here for the grow light situation and then once i'm ready to pot them up which has to happen eventually either way i can just pot them right out of here into four inch containers and then they can live here in the greenhouse and i won't take up as much room underneath our grow lights so that's uh, yeah, I'm growing them in a smaller cell just to save room under the grow lights. And then your echinacea wants to be started 10 to 12 weeks before your average last frost date. I feel like I could fudge that a little bit and start them a little tiny bit early so the plants are a little bit bigger to put them out. Now the thing about echinacea seed, the echinacea purpurea typically do not require a cold stratification period in order to germinate, but other varieties do and I have experienced this firsthand. And it even says here on the packet, germinates without stratification. So I've planted echinacea purpurea from seed a couple of times. No stratification, beautiful germination, great luck with the plants. But then I go with like some specialty variety of echinaceas and I tried to seed them exactly the same way and they came up so spotty. So be uh, aware of that. If you're growing other varieties of echinacea, they may need a cold period, in which case, you know, you can plant them up and pop them in a cold frame outside 
perfect for the winter sewing method. Um, you know, pop them in some water jugs or whatever kind of jugs you're using to do winter sewing. They'll get that cold period before they come up. But with these, we don't have to worry about that. We can just plant them right alongside everything else. And I love the way Echinacea purpurea look. I think they're just so classic and beautiful. They add really pretty movement to the garden and the cones are massive and they're really good like for your medicinal stuff if that's what you're growing them for. Anyways, the process here is the same as normal. We're going to pre-moisten our seed starting mix, which I have right here. We'll load up our seed trays. I've already made some labels. I'll probably have to make more because I'm gonna be splitting some of these trays uh, between varieties. And we're just gonna get these planted, you guys. And if we have time, I think I'm gonna move our golf carts to the new barn. I was gonna clean them off today and do that, and now it's raining, so I don't know uh, I don't know. I just want to get them under cover. So that might be part of what we get done today. In other quick news, radishes that we recently thinned are looking absolutely gorgeous. And our lettuce seed seedlings are looking pretty good too. And boy, I haven't watered these hardly at all. They're staying so wet. And I really want to come in with some fertilizer, but not until they dry out a little bit. I don't want to overwater, but they still look pretty good. And germination on our green stock vertical garden is going pretty well. We've got good spinach going here. We've got lettuce, butter crunch right there. There's some other lettuce going up here. Uh, let's see, what else have we got? So there's some lettuce there. We've got radishes and radishes right here. Nothing yet on the carrots or parsley that I can see. Yep, nothing yet. Oh, nope. That's a parsley right there, right on the edge. We'll just have to be patient. Okay, let's get these seeds done. We've got five trays ready. I might need one more. Kind of just depends on how things go. I'm gonna move through the geranium seeds first and then we'll reassess. But here's four of them and there's the fifth. So the first variety we're gonna plant are the bullseye salmon geraniums. And oh my word, are these so pretty. I think this might be one of my favorites. They have a kind of deep purple leaf with a green edge. And then the flowers are just a very soft salmon color. And when I think of salmon pink, like this flower is exactly what I think of. They're so beautiful and they don't get enormous, 14 to 16 inches tall typically. Uh, they can handle more sun than some of your other darker leaved geraniums. So keep that in mind uh, if you want that look, but you want to put it out in more sun, they do it. Uh, I had ours last year in sort of a part shade situation. I did notice that I'm going to need to bait around my geraniums if I plant them in the ground. I don't know what was eating them, but something was. So I will bait with like the bug and slug killer that takes care of slugs and earwigs because it was one of the too. We had a much more moist summer last year and I noticed we had a lot more slug damage than we typically do even on our lamb's ear, our hostas, and the geraniums. But they did really well where I put them minus the little leaf eating bugs. Let's take a look at the seeds. All these seeds of course will look the same for the geraniums. And all of these came from Swallowtail Garden Seeds. That's where I've ordered all of my geranium seeds from. And there's just 10 per packet. They're not tiny. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 11. And these have been pelletized or coated. So it's good to move through as many of your seeds as you can that first year because their shelf life does go down after a, a bit. And I went through and I made just little indentations on the top. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I'm just gonna do one seed per cell because I usually have such good luck with the germination rate on these. 
that I feel like it's almost wasting to put more than one seed in. I mean, unless you're willing to separate them, um, which we could do. We could do two seeds per cell, and then when we pop them up into larger size containers, we could separate them at that point. But there we go. So that's our first packet, 11 seeds. See the little flecks of yellow in there? And because they want to be just barely covered, I'm just going to barely cover over them just to where we can't see that yellow anymore. You could do this with vermiculite instead of soil if you wanted to. Okay, so that's what you do. Typically though, I don't cover my seeds until my whole, uh, my whole tray is filled because sometimes it's hard to remember where you left off, but that was for demonstration purposes. So I need to remember to fill the cell and then the rest of all of these. Remember to identify where you have things planted because I don't have exact even numbers. I mean, a 72 cell like tray, that's a really odd number. I think I've got 120 of the bullseye salmon seeds. So um, that's clearly not gonna fill up two trays, two full trays. So I need to make sure to identify where every variety is. It's so easy to get them mixed up. And I know you think you won't, and I'm not gonna say you will, but I would. <laughs> I would get them messed up. So anyway, I identify the heck out of things. You'll thank yourself later. All right, let's keep planting. All the geranium seeds planted that I brought out here, we ended up with only 16 spots at the end of our fifth tray. So I think what I'm gonna do is go into the studio and grab 16 Maverick white geranium seeds because we already have 10 growing in the Hartley. I can add those to that bunch if we want to in the end. And that means we will have 370 geraniums started. I'm so excited about it because that amount, I mean, if you add up how much it would cost to buy 370 geraniums, by the time we plant them out, they'll be at least four inch size, if not like a quart size, that adds up so fast. But check this out. So our first tray is completely bullseye salmon. And then I had enough bullseye salmon to make it all the way to this row. Now, if the whole row is the next variety, I just put one tag on the right hand side because that's just kind of my method. I always do right hand side. So I know that this whole chunk is bullseye salmon and all of these are the apple blossom. And then we've got a full tray of apple blossom. And then we only had enough apple blossom to go to this row, but only two of the packs I was able to fill. So I labeled both of those so I don't get messed up. And then we started our new variety, which is Quicksilver, which is this and then the rest on the back side. Oh, I have a seed still showing. Gotta like double check. Sometimes when you're doing this many cells, it's easy to miss one or two. And then in our fifth tray, we have Quicksilver starting here and it goes to almost the end. We were able to fill these two packs and then we'll start in with our Maverick White right here and fill up the rest of it. So we need to run to the studio. We need to grab those geranium seeds and then also one more seed tray for the Echinacea. And I can't decide if I want to do a 50 count cell tray for those or a 72, maybe just 50. I don't know if I have enough seeds to stretch to 72. There they are, Maverick white geraniums. Okay, got those. I think we'll do one of our paper pot trays for the echinacea. Okay, Maverick white seeds going in.
Remember these paper pots? I don't know if Gardner Supply still has these, but I love them. They're really awesome. They come with this tray that has a bunch of holes in the bottom. So this is really a good one to put in a greenhouse situation where you can water and not worry about what's you know underneath. Um, or, you know, like inside, I'll probably pop this under a grow light and we've got uh, solid trays under them so that we'll catch the water. But you take your paper pots and you use this little clip thing. You only need this to hold it on to the tray until there's soil in it. So we'll clip it to one side. Like that. And same thing for the other side. There. 50 cells, they hold up surprisingly well to a bunch of water and soil, and they're super easy to peel apart and plant out. And you don't have to take them out of the paper, obviously. Um, and it's interesting, when you peel them apart, they have paper on all four sides, every single one, even though it looks like um, they're all connected. I mean, they're connected in a way, but they all come apart separately. Uh, but then their roots have a lot of oxygen flow to them. So I don't know, I've been ha having really good luck with this system. Okay, echinacea seeds want to go about an eighth of an inch deep, and I usually put a layer of vermiculite on top of everything that I uh, plant from seed, but I'm out at the moment, so we're skipping that step today. I don't know if you can see what those look like. A little bit bigger than the geranium seeds. I'm going to shoot for two in each one of these cells. Okay, our echinacea is in. I'm pretty sure I got about three seeds per cell in here. So we can thin these out or separate and transplant if we would like to later on. Uh, and then the white geraniums in the back part of that flat. Oh my goodness. So six whole flats all done today. We are going to move them all into the studio. We're gonna dome the ones we've got domes for. That's the one drawback of these is I don't have a dome, but we should be okay with these. These are pretty tough. Okay, now I would like to get these rhizomes planted, the iris rhizomes. You can see there's still some green in there. Rhizomes look really great. So I'm just gonna use some of the leftover soil. I know it's seed starting mix, but it doesn't really matter. We've got it in such a controlled environment in here. It's just a lighter blend of soil, so it has the potential of drying out a little quicker. However, it's really nice for developing roots because they have a very easy time maneuvering through the soil. Uh, but since we're in here all the time checking on things, I would rather use the soil and not have to try to save it for my next seed starting project. And I think it'll work out just fine. Now these we do not bury very deep. In fact, they're kind of surface planted and oftentimes you leave the rhizome exposed to some light. I don't always do that outside when I'm planting them and they seem to do okay either way, but uh, you don't want to plant them very deep. That's for sure gonna groom off the dried up leaves here. I just lay it on top and pack some soil in around it. I am looking forward to both the color and the scent of this iris. I'm a huge fan of iris anyway and I think I mentioned I would love to add to to add to what we've currently got in the way of irises so this is a great step. Step in the right direction. There we go. Should probably ID these.
Okay, all of them here in the studio under grow lights. These five are the geraniums and then our echinacea right here. I did sort of pop a dome on the top because there is a fan blowing to keep our lisianthus happy. Uh, that would potentially dry these out a little bit quicker than I want to. So I think this will help even though they're not completely covered a little bit will help. Lisianthus are all doing really well. These are the ones we planted toward the end of November because I wanted to have a month head start just to see where things would be at once we get ready to plant. You can see we've got tons to separate. This is the mari mariachi white and then the voyage two white. We've got some with some considerable size looking really good. And then these four, five, five little trays here are the ones we planted semi recently. However, I did pop domes off because if you look closely, I don't think you'll be able to tell with this camera, but there are seedlings in here. There's two in that one. I think every single cell actually has a seedling in it. Right there, right there. They're just minuscule, tiny little things. Usually once a full tray has germinated, that's when the humidity dome comes off. It'll be the same with all of the rest of these as well. But Lysianthus are a little particular about moisture levels. They do not like to be wet. In fact, they like to dry a little bit between waterings once they're up and uh, have a little bit of size. So these I just watered earlier today. That's why the soil is looking so dark. Uh, and the vermiculite has sort of kind of worked into the soil and worked around the plant. So it doesn't look as light in color as these do because these have a stronger layer of vermiculite on the top for the moment. But these, it'll be a good two, three days before I water them again, probably. It makes me happy to see these shelving units fill up because that's just more plant activity. That means we're getting closer to spring and that makes me very happy. And we've got some super fun plans for this year that I'm excited to start on. It does look like we have a break in the rain, so I think I would like to get those golf carts parked in the barn. I don't think I'm gonna do a full cleanup on them, but I'll grab a towel because I know I won't be able to sit on the seats. Probably super wet. Yeah, look at the ground around the chicken coop. Oh my goodness, it's just like, I'm still wearing my snow boots around because it's such a mess. Okay, I wanna park the six seater. <laughs> Aaron really wanted a six seater golf cart. It looks like we could put fringe around the top and it could be a cart like a zoo cart. Oh my goodness. It has been handy though. Okay, not too bad. We actually use this one quite a lot this like late fall when it's really chilly. Having a break on the windshield there does help. I am really hoping we don't get stuck anywhere. We gotta plow through this snow right here. Oof. Oh no. <laughs> okay, let's back up. Oh boy. Let's try the other side wet. Oh my gosh, I think we barely made it. I'm just gonna leave that towel tucked up just in case. Oh yeah, way better to have it in here. It'll keep it nicer longer. I think we're actually going to use this barn for storage for now. Uh, since we, you know, even if we were going to use this barn for horses, which we may uh, for a little while, but we need to work out the water and electrical and all of that sort of situation first. I'm going to do this because I can hear rain. Yeah, it started to rain again. We had an architect reach out who specializes in equestrian, I mean, beautiful barns and grounds and all of that. And so that was really exciting. You know, Aaron really wants to build a barn. And really, we initially thought we would be building a barn one day uh, in the dirt land somewhere. And I think that's how we would like to have it set up eventually. So for now, since we're not set up to use it for animals yet anyway. I think we're gonna move a bunch of pots in there. We'll store, you know, the golf cart in there, stuff like that. Oh, this one doesn't fit, shoot. That one does not look like it's taller, but it bumps up right there on the top, on the, the roof there, shoot. Well, at least one of them fits. Well, that
that's that. This is where the golf cart's gonna stay for now. And you guys, that is gonna do it for today's projects. I need to go back through my seed inventory. I know that there are more that need to be started a little bit early. Uh, so I'm gonna round all of those up and we'll probably get those started in the next week or two. And then we'll be cruising into Maine seed starting season, which I don't think I'm gonna be starting quite as many as I have in years past because I'm kinda of gonna kinda of do things a little bit differently in the cut flower garden. I'm looking forward to it. And I think it's gonna be, I don't know. I'm just excited about it because it'll be a little bit of a change up. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.